takes away the emergency aspect. Where is all this equipment being manufactured? So where is what? Manufactured. Manufactured. So the meters are manufactured in Mexico. The high power meters are manufactured in Mexico. And uh, fully QA and tested by census 15. Uh, all the other equipment, the infrastructure, is all U.S. made in uh, Union Town, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. But the actual meters themselves are Mexico-based. Um, it's our facility in Mexico, census facility in Mexico. Um, but then all the base stations, all electronic, all the software is, is local um, technology. A couple of uh, things just, just to add. Um, when they did take this out for, for bid, one of the components of it was a, um, the, the contract is not a three and a half million dollars today. Um, it actually is $1.2 million once we execute the agreement, and then about $292,000 a quarter for two more years. Um, so it actually gives us a three years in which to pay for it, capitalize on some of the efficiencies um, uh, to, help, to help cover that cost. But um, So it's $1.2 million if we approve it. That gets gets the ball rolling, and then quarterly, it's a like $292,000 payment for two additional years. That's when it would be paid off in full, unless we paid it off earlier. But it actually is a pretty good deal for the community, um, because I, my understanding is you guys don't normally do this. We don't. No. <laughs> it's it's just been a, a, good, been a good customer. Uh, the commercial meters, the larger, the one inch and a half ones, are made locally. They're made in uh, Union Town, Pennsylvania. Just the eye pearls, the plastic or the composite meters are made in Mexico, but the commercial meters are made in Pennsylvania. The technology that you mentioned, you know, things are going to change and get better. Is that is that in the meter or is that in the smart point? Uh, both, both. The uh, new um, new smart points will be available with um, longer life batteries, that technology, and then the actual meters themselves. Um, lots of advantages, as I talked about. Because we could have a house that's going to get a meter, but, or get a get a smart point, but not actually have a meter for three years. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to put these things on the house now? If yes, because they're programmable and upgradable over the air. So we can talk to them with the radio, and we can upgrade the the smart points over the air. I'm just talking about the potential of having something for three years when something bigger and better has yep. come out, but we haven't even attached the meter to it yet. Yep. No, we approach uh, census and that we've always had this discussion about <coughs> make it backwards compatible, make it upgradable. Um, that is always our concern that that's happening. So yes, as those as the product comes in and advances, um, we'll support for the legacy technology uh, to be upgradable most of the time over the air. You want to be able to do that with the meter itself, though. Not the meter itself. No, if the meter, if you're going to turn remote shut off, or there's new technology. I mean, there's some changes we can do to the meter themselves over there. Not much. Most of it's done in the smart point. Um, as the, but the meter does have electronics in it. We can go out to them right now physically and just connect a wire. We have a, a laptop and a connector and, and program the meters themselves right now and upgrade the software and the meters. Um, but most of the stuff is done through that smart point on the outside and, and talks to the meter. Would, would our workers be able to do that like when, when this system gets up and rolling? Would they be able to do that? You know, our yeah. own city workers go yeah. and hook up yeah. to that. That would be part of our training process. Oh, okay. through. They'll so have the equipment to do it. Okay. The advantage Taylor has is that, I mean, the flip side of that is that the meters are already compatible. Where a lot of communities I go into, they need new meters because they're so old, they don't work with this kind of technology. So the good news is that you can do your meters as you see fit. And, and every meter that's in the city will work with this system. So when you guys go out and do this installation, you're looking up to the current meter, and then it might be another three years before it gets right. But at least we're utilizing that smart point immediately. Correct. Right. You, you are. And the biggest thing about utilizing that smart point right off the bat is we program those parameters in there. So if that's a big user and we see a leak and that smart point alerts us, and then that it would be now a customer that you may want to put in a new meter in because something's going on. So then that one gets replaced. So you can see some of that decline in revenue, per se, at that meter, we're not seeing the normal usage pattern you would see because you're getting all this data. So that would flag your CSI system and say, hey, look at we need to look at changing this meter out. That goes on this list. And you can start figuring out which customers have, which customers' meters are slowing down faster. Right. How long does that process take, and does the property owner have to be there for it to occur? 
Uh, when we install the initial smart point, the property owner does not have to be there because we're just taking off the box on the outside and replacing the box on the outside. We're not going in to replace the meter. It's pretty quick. quick. Yeah. Should yeah take it, too long. it would be the, the process of replacing the meter itself that would require an appointment to get right. in the house of course. Yeah. So the, the large commercial meters, of course, we're going to have to set up appointments and do all that stuff, and that is tracked, and we give you that information back when we're going to be there, contact information, when it's been changed, and we're giving you data back because your billing side will have to be updated with a new meter ID, smart point ID, all these things. So we give you all that information back. And this proposal calls out, again, as I said, a six-month installation period right. for all the uh, smart points and then the commercial meters and the software and having it all set up. Now, do you, uh you're at the you're the supply house, correct? Do you, do you subcontract with a public contractor to change these meters? Yes, we do. Uh, uh, we have, there's a company that basically their specialty is installing smart points and meters and things like that. So yes, we have a contract with them to come in and basically do that. Okay. We could use them. What happens to the scenario that you go into, let's say? Uh, Smart pipe company over here, and you go to pull the meter, but the valves on either side are bad. Yeah. What happens there? Normally we notify you, and then we try to get make arrangements with the cement company to try to get those valves fixed because I would hope in your ordinance you have to have access to that meter, and those valves should be operational, and that's the property owners. Okay. So you going to make it clear because a lot of people assume that. <coughs> exactly. Yeah. You know. and, and we'll experience that same issue in the residential site, oh, yeah. Charlie. Yeah, well, and, I know. and that's been one of the fact we were talking about that today, about how we were going to handle that situation. So. Okay. And uh, and, and your contractors all know about the, you know, the, you know, the water towers or, or anything that they have water. These people will be, you know, contacted well ahead of time. A lot of people have to have water to run their equipment. Correct. No, we would make arrangements. I mean, some of the stuff is there could be a day where we have to do it in the evening or early in the morning because of certain circumstances. You know? Yeah, I just don't want to come back to the city that, you know, they changed it. Now my water, electric water heater don't work because it, you know. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we would probably design a, a well, we would design a form that would be signed off on, particularly on the residential side, we were talking about it, for the valves issue particularly, um, because quite simply, if those valves don't work in the house, we're gonna have to shut it off at the curb. And if the, the curb stop doesn't work, which some of them might not, uh, then, our responsibility. then it's our responsibility to dig it up, get that functioning. Um, but at that particular time, if their shutoffs in the house weren't working, we'd like to notify them so they could have a plumber there to replace those if, so they don't have to shut the system off again. So those are the things that you bring up, Charlie, we'll definitely have to talk through. In this uh, proposal, is there a fee for the, the workers? Like, is there a, to cover the cost of the workers? Like, if, it, if you have to bring in more for this or something like, you know, I, I guess I haven't seen it, so, you know, I mean. Right. If you need more help or more workers, is there, are you talking about from our side or their side? I'm talking about from our side. From our side, that's something that, that we, you know, would put forth either in a budget proposal. Okay. Like in our first year, instead of 4,000, say we only could get to three based on all the factors involved, 3,000. Okay. Then, you know, I could come forward, I would bring forward potentially in a budget, budgeting cycle. For then the following year, hey, I'd like to add one person so we could speed it up. This is what it could take. Theirs is a, you know, okay. the, their contract is they got to get it. They got to get it done within six months. Okay. Would you be done replacing any of the residential lines before the initial project is completed? Well, we have a, a lot of them that have been replaced, particularly like the ones we probably replaced 50 of them this winter that have rose and cracked. And you've used the new ones. Correct. Uh -huh. So we've, we've been using the new meters. So there's a, there are a, bun, a, a bunch, and I don't know the exact number, that are, are actually the new, 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 new meters. Up to so we would go back to the oldest 
our, our attempt would be to go back to the oldest residential meters and kind of start with those first because that's where we regain our most efficiency by putting in the... But the ones you can't read? The ones that aren't transmitting? Well, the ones that aren't transmitting are probably because of that the end point box. Oh. And that will be taken care of in the contract. So once that box is replaced, we'll be able to read those daily. And there are a number of other benefits on the billing side. Um, uh, as, as he mentioned, uh, just the features of being able to leak detect, um, you know, get accurate. You know, we have to, right now, we have to send someone out to do a final, final meter read uh, for a move out where um, that can be queried right there on the computer um, by Sue and she'd have it instantaneously where the minute could pay. So we can also, we talked about the estimation. The system can do its own estimation, so you don't have to do it manually. The, the billing software also does, we can set that range of, you said six months, I think. You can do that. The software can be set up to do that for you. You tell us the range you want to set it for, we can do the estimation based on the history of the meter, the location. As long as we have some history, we can do the estimation. So